I'm starting to think. I used to think that I looked way cooler back in the day. I feel like I'm cooler now. Fucking right now, perfect. Hey, that fucking upgrade, dude. Gimme, gimme. Survival Hunter, it is pretty good DPS, and this guy has Beast Hunter gear, and I'm also running buff for everybody, which he doesn't, you know, so yeah, easy. Man. Just a quick video, guys, you can make this micro to simultaneously post at general chat, guild chat, and looking for group chat, so you can easier find groups. On top of that, you can actually install add-on called looking for group bulletin board, and you know looking for more stuff like uh, uh, me already here already here <laughs> oh, hello, yeah. Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Oh, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or? do this. Leroy Jenkins! Oh, my God, he just ran in. Save him! Oh, jeez, stick to the plane! Oh, jeez. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stick to the plane, Jeff. Stick to the plane. Oh, gee. Oh, fuck. Give me my intervention. Hurry up. Body. Maddie, who do you got? I like Geronimo. Yes. Okay. Guy's player. an athlete, good good big, player. fast, good talented. Drop a mind with Clean cut, good face. Yeah, good job. Five tools good time. Good, good looking ball player. Can he hit? Yeah, he's got a he beautiful swing, swing, right, Barry? Ball explodes off his back. He throws the club head at the ball, and when he connects, it, he drives it. It pops off the bat. You can hear it all over the ball. A lot of pop coming off the bat. And if he's a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? Well, he is a good hitter. He'll be, he'll be ready. Yeah, so he's going to be good. This path begins in Darkshore at Aberdeen. You have to take the route all the way south to the night. and into Ashland. You're going to want to pick up Aspenar flight point and then continue on your way down into the northern barrens. Now, running through Ashenvale in this version of the game is extremely dangerous. What do you mean, bro?
illumine light your path. Guys, you have to play this game smart, not not rush it too much. You know, get value from bonus EXP when you are AFK. You know, for example, you get uh, buff from the sea. Greetings, traveler. Easy. Well, that sucks. Did you pop up one little peek? A little peeky poo. Don't be shy. Get to your cover elements. I know it's Martin Luther King Day. They're probably home from school. Get him out of the room right now. Tell them to clean their room, to go outside, to climb a tree. Oh, trust me, there's a lot of them, champs. Wow, wow, thank you for the $5 donation, Doc. I went through a breakup in 2020, and you got me through it now in 2024, and you got me through it. I appreciate you so much. You're the best streamer, and don't even ask how you just do it. The way you finished off that donation, that is easily the quote of the day. Appreciate you being inside of the arena today. Get your front row ticket, your VIP access. Get your feet right there on the stage. Hush the people around you. Tell them to shut up. In fact, you don't even have to sit. Like, all it takes is... Nobody fucks with the Jesus. Left right here. I'm projecting that I need to win at least 99 games in order to make it to the postseason. We need to score at least 814 runs in order to win those games and allow no more than 645 runs. <laughs> Hello guys, just a quick video five features that we would like to see in season of discovery my first one is summoning stones for dungeons or uh, dungeon founder you know so we can actually do questing while waiting for dungeons that would be great you know especially now when you know when you get older you like time so such features will be very huge for the game you know mm. or at least summoning stones yeah and then we would need more class balance, of course, you know. Mm, there is a lot of runes they can add, but I don't want them that they just balance the game around runes. I want them to also add uh, class balance. Mm. Uh, you can hear it all over the ballpark. A lot of pop coming off the bat. It's effort. If he's a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? He is a good Not hitter. Minor Let him cook. <laughs> I know you're taking it in the teeth out there, but the first guy through the wall. He always gets bloody. Always. This is threatening, not just a way of doing business, but, it's, but in their minds it's threatening the game. But really what it's threatening is their livelihood. It's threatening their jobs. It's threatening the way that they do things. And every time that happens, whether it's a government or a way of doing business or whatever it is, the people who are holding the reins, they have their hands on the switch, they go batshit crazy. I mean, Anybody who's not tearing their team down right now and rebuilding it using your model, they're dinosaurs. They'll be sitting on their ass on the sofa in October watching the Boston Red Sox win the World Series. Cabron, I need to see you a boss. What do you want to discuss now? My favorite color? Hello guys, good morning. You know, I love some of these games, you know, World of Warcraft, Smite. 
when these games came out 10 15 years ago they were one of the most innovative games out there but what what really pisses me off lately is that a lot of these gaming companies right they don't they don't know how to manage their games they don't know how to manage their communities but they definitely know how to monetize everything right not only a, a lot of these co big companies also use uh, you know social media manipulation bots and so on but it really pisses me off, you know, for example, Blizzard or Smite, right? They made Season of Discovery, Smite made Smite 2, right? And at the end of the day, they're literally just rehashing the content people made for these companies 20 years ago. And most of these people don't even work at these companies anymore, right? Season of Discovery is a typical example. Blizzard needed five years. They needed five years to make a single balanced PvP English server on WoW Classic or on uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, right? The sole reason why Wrath of the Lich King is still so unpopular, even though it's the most complete form of a game, EU, the biggest region, didn't have a single balanced PvP English server for the last five, six, seven years. And then people are like, why is the World of Warcraft not doing well, right? And how they treat, how they treat Trackful, how they treat Swifty, right? All these legends in the community, right? And now, Smite 2 is the same story, right? People are acting like this is some new content, when all they did is, what? Uh, import assets into the new engine. And the game is not even done yet, they're, and they're already monetizing it, right? And they still didn't fix all the thousands issues Smite 1 has, right? They didn't. We still have no rank leaderboard rewards or tournaments for arena players. We have no pre-made coup or tournaments for Conquest, even though it's supposed to be the main game mode. We have no old fun game modes or assets back into the match of the day rotation, they could easily rotate on weekends, right? They removed Clash, they removed Siege, they removed Ranked Arena, they didn't improve Clans, right? And this is the problem. And I'm, you know, when you, grow, when you grow older, you realize these companies are all full of shit, man. They don't make new content, they just monetize, they just trying to, they, that's why we have zero, zero important futures, right? And even if you look at the season of discovery, season of discovery, this is nothing new, right? World of Warcraft classic was made 15 years ago, but people who actually love the game, who were innovative, most of these players, people don't work at Blizzard anymore. And on top of that, they literally stole a lot of the futures from private server, like World of Warcraft Ascension, you know, the new runes and such, these are already on private servers. It's not, it's not like they're innovating. No, they're just rehashing new thing, the same old content and charging money for it, right? I love these games, but the companies that handle these games, it's almost impossible to support them these days, right? So many problems. And you, you, you would thought that, you know, Blizzard would actually fix some of the balancing issues. No, they just add new overpowered runes that when usually make no sense that some people who like the balancing is insane, right? They added that rune that gives you like 30% crit for free, right? And so many, it makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. They are not changing the balance, right? For example, hunters being able to use traps in combat, deterrence action, I mean, uh, disengage actually being useful, right? So many problems the classes still have. Um, Virim Sting still cannot be used in combat, just like traps, right? The scaling, the... Just because you add new overpowered runes doesn't mean you are actually understanding and fixing the game, right? Oh man, I don't know, like... Hey guys, you know, what are some of the things that they can improve when it comes to class balance? 
So for example, Hunter, uh, if you just look at the talent tree, gear stink, okay? Now there are many things, uh, you know, what are the biggest gameplay problems when it comes to Hunter? And I think this is what Blizzard also needs some uh, experience from actual gamers, okay? So what we actually need is, uh, um, we need to be able to use our traps in combat, right? That would make, uh, that would be such a huge of a life improvement. Wyrmstink, you know, the final ability for survival tree also cannot be used in combat. So if they make those two things being able to use in combat, then I think the survival melee hunter would be really, really fun to play and really meet, I think. Um, but if you cannot use traps in combat, if you cannot use Virum Stink in combat, then what's the point, you know? Hey guys, you know what are some of the things that they can improve when it comes to class balance? So for example Hunter, uh, if you just look at the talent tree, gear stink, okay? Now there are many things, uh, you know, what are the biggest gameplay problems when it comes to Hunter? And I think this is what Blizzard also needs some uh, experience from actual gamers, okay? So what we actually need is... Uh, um, we need to be able to use our traps in combat, right? That would make uh, that would be such a huge of life improvement. Wyrmstink, you know, the final ability for survival tree also cannot be used in combat. So if they make those two things being able to use in combat, then I think the survival melee hunter would be really, really fun to play and really meet, I think. Um, but if you cannot use traps in combat, if you cannot use Wyrmstink in combat, then what's the point, you know? And and these are just some of the examples of class balance not being good. And I think this they should really address this, you know. This is very important in WoW Classic. And this is what hold, has been holding uh, WoW Classic back. Um, And it's like, they are literally, you know, <laughs> you know, people acting like this is some new content. It's not a new content, man. That's the issue, right? It's not a new content. They're just replaying the content that was in the game 20 years ago. Again, 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 with almost zero innovation, right? Tell me, what did the season of Discovery actually bring new? Runes, okay, they're fun. But that was already on private servers, on Ascension, for example, and they destroyed that private server and now they put it into, into their game, right? So how can you support these companies, you know? You know, this is, this is why I'm so divided here, because at one side I really want to support these games that people put so much love and effort into it. But then these companies, these people who are still in these companies 20 years after, who are just rebranding, rehashing things, right? I don't want to support that, right? Especially how they treat the trackful, right? Or Smite too, right? I have been asking for last, I think, seven years. I made videos, I made over 2,000 videos for Smite. And they didn't listen to a single thing I said. 
even though we loved this game more than anything and now they want to make smite 2 and they immediately already you know charge money for it and in the last five years what did harris or titan forge did exactly for the smite nothing they removed content from the game they don't listen to the community they divide it on every corner they ban people that uh, uh, they criticize their game right they're ignoring 70% of their player base. EU, the biggest region, Arena, the most popular game mode, console players, international players. They literally handpick pro players and then they balance the whole game around that too, right? We have zero uh, leaderboard or rewards or tournaments or uh, updated map for Arena. The current Arena map is six years old, even though it's the most popular game mode, right? And then... All they do is make new events to sell overpriced skins, right? Because they want to make money, because they need to survive, right? Because they don't know how to fix their games, because they haven't do anything what actually matters for the game in the last five years. So why would I still support these companies, man? I would love to support these companies, but they make zero new content. They don't listen to their player base, they divide it on every corner, they, they sleep on our love and passion for years. They make fun of us. And now only then when they can see to make money, not only then they make changes, right? I'm done supporting these companies. They literally have zero competition on the fucking market and they still don't know how to manage their games, right? Just like Japanese gaming studio. They make great games, but they have no idea how to make complete games, right? Elden Ring, Monster Hunter. It's always the same story, I don't... <sighs> and it actually pisses me off, you know? It's, it's literally just a new way for these guys to monetize everything. Imagine actually fixing the game. You guys really think Smite 2 is gonna be any better? No, it will, we will still have one of the most divided community ever, even more divided than before. Without probably any innovation, we will probably still only have outdated Conquest Dota map, right? And I wanna check some of these videos, right? Only two year old account. Only one year old account. You see, this is what really pisses me off about these guys. Not only do they get handpicked by fucking Hyres, and they get paid for be for gatekeeping other pro players, they also use bots and promotional accounts on social media, right? To manipulate their viewers, to manipulate algorithms, so any other small content creator has no chance to ever get suggested, right? This is the guys who actually get promoted. This is the guys who get handpicked for SPL, right? Smite Pro League was never about best of the best clashing, like most people think it is. It's just a huge business, right? Where these big YouTubers who also manipulate social media with bots and promotional accounts, these guys get rewarded, right? And this is really what pisses me off about social media, about sports, esports content creation. It's just a huge business, right? Man. And let's see some of these comments here. Welcome back to Paladins on my end of it. I'm hey, I found a bunch of videos of Koroks being tortured and I'm going to make a tier list for it. Psych! I actually made two tier lists. The first one is how likely the Korok is to survive. The second one is how unique and diabolical. You find okay, you are a damn legend and what you do do for this community. Absolutely amazing. What the fuck does he does for the community again? Tell me. When does he was the last time he actually talked about important issues? He's just content farming. He's just trying to make money out of social media, out of kids and out of hires. Why why should we um, glorify these guys, right? They didn't even earn a spots at Pro League. No, nobody earned anything, right? Maybe these are just kids or bots. That's usually the answer on YouTube. It's like... A bit sad I didn't see my goat finally... Man, this comment pisses me off. They, all, uh, they call themselves world champions, right? Even though they know they have been liking 70% of their competition for years now. For fucking years. But they don't care because they make money out of YouTube and they money out of Harris, right?
because they're a joke. <clears throat> the other things we'll be covering in this video is exactly what has changed, talent builds and runes to use now, the current pet Last situation, awesome and the reasons why you choose one talent build over another. We won't be going crazy deep into the math as the values will slightly change player to player, but the overall point remains the same. So starting off with a list of changes, we see a 15% increase in Chimera shot weapon damage from 85% to 100%. This buff was definitely needed to make it more viable again and bring it more in line with other rune options like Beast Mastery. Next we have Explosive Shot base damage increased by 25% before attack power modifiers. The important thing to note with this change is that it's only the base light damage, of the moon. which in the grand scheme of things equates to a very small DPS boost, making this rune still a poor choice overall, but it can see some use on trash mobs if you do very large pulls and black- to the night by the light of the moon my men my men yo 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 Zebra. Zebra, zebra. No, look at this guy. Y tú debes de ser Varga, ¿no? Sí, me dijeron que eras un tipo inteligente. <risa> Llegaste aquí justo. ¿Cuáles son las grandes?
<laughs> by the light of the moon. Hail to the night. <laughs> Lieutenant, call your witness. Now we actually have damage. Plus we get bonus <laughs> for my party. <laughs> Melee hunter meta, let's go. Here there. Off with you. 